So in this video, we're going to answer the question, when should we use Gauss's law? So first of all, what is Gauss's law? Well, Gauss's law just says that the electric flux, which we usually write as phi E, is equal to the enclosed charge inside a Gaussian surface divided by epsilon naught. And if we're inside some material with a different permittivity, then this will change. So the elect and the electric flux is equal to basically we're adding up all of the electric field that is leaving a given Gaussian surface. So what this might look like is, you know, if I have a, say, a point charge, I could choose a Gaussian surface to, a spherical Gaussian surface to surround this point charge, and then I'd integrate all of the electric field pointing out of that surface. And dA, so this is our electric field, it's pointing away from the charge. And dA similarly always points out of the surface that we are integrating. And hopefully, dA and the electric field point in the same direction so that this integral is easy to do. So I should first note that Gauss's law is always valid, so it always works. You can always, you know, make this statement that the flux is equal to the enclosed charge over epsilon naught, but it is not, importantly, it is not always easy. And that's because, you know, this integral here, this E dot dA, this is complicated. Uh, and unless the electric field happens to be pointing in the same direction as the Gaussian surface that we've chosen, this is not necessarily going to be easy. But if it is, then our integral just transforms into a multiplication and life is wonderful. So the question is, when is Gauss's law easy to use and when is it not? And the answer turns out to be, turns out to have to do with symmetry. So there's a few different kinds of symmetries that we can use Gauss's law for. The first one is spherical symmetry. So anytime our charge distribution has spherical symmetry, so think a, a point charge, for example, or a sphere of charge, or a spherical shell that has a bunch of charge on its surface, or even something a little more ugly, like a a sphere that has a non-uniform charge distribution. So it's got more charge in the center and then less charge as we go out to the edges. All of these are examples of spherical symmetry. And so we can always choose a spherical Gaussian surface. And the electric field will always be pointing in the same direction as our area vector. And even more importantly than that, the electric field at a given r is constant. So the electric field is the same, has the same magnitude here as it does here, as it does here, as it does here. And this is a hallmark of spherical symmetry. The second kind is what's called translational symmetry. And or first, let's let's talk about 1D translational symmetry. So examples of this are infinite lines of charge. So an, a line of charge going to infinity in both directions, a cylinder of charge, and maybe that charge is distributed uniformly throughout the cylinder. Maybe it's non-uniform. Maybe we have a cylindrical shell of charge. As long as these are infinite, in length, then we can use Gauss's law for them. And that's because, so if we look down the barrel of our, of our cylinder, our line charge, so this is we're looking straight on at it, our electric field is constant on a circular surface or a cylindrical surface around the cylinder. So if this is our line charge, then we can draw a cylinder around it. And the electric field will be constant, the same here and here and here and here, and it's always pointing straight out. So it's pointing in the same direction as our surface. And so our integral just becomes a multiplication because our electric field is constant. We can take it out. Things are nice and simple. 
So why is this called translational symmetry? Well, suppose that I am, you know, just me, Jordan, sitting on an infinite line charge. So stretches out as far as the eye can see. Let's draw it more in this direction as well. If I look to my left, what do I see? I see just an infinite amount of charge. So charge stretching as far as my eye can see. And if I look to my right, I see the same exact thing. But then let's say I move a little bit to the right. So let's say I move, you know, some distance D. Has anything changed? So if I look to my right and I look to my left, I'll still see an infinite amount of charge. There's still charge as far as I can see in both directions. So in a sense, nothing has really changed about this situation. And this is why it's called translational symmetry, because if I translate myself, everything is the same. And so the type of Gaussian surface we can use for this is a cylinder. Lastly, there's one other kind of symmetry, and that's 2D translational symmetry. So translational symmetry, but in two dimensions. So some examples of this are an infinite plane or an infinite sheet of charge. So I've just got charge both in X and Y, infinite in that direction, infinite in that direction, infinite in that direction, and that direction. Uh, an infinite plate of charge also works. So if I have some finite thickness, to an infinite plate, so it still goes infinite in that direction, infinite, 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 but it's got a bunch of charge, perhaps uniformly distributed throughout the plate, or maybe not, maybe it's a little more ugly than that. As long as it's uniform in X and Y, then we can use Gauss's law. And the type of surface we use for these is typically a cylinder, so a cylinder that penetrates through the surface, Alternatively, we can use really any, uh, any type of Gaussian surface that has the same area on top as it does on the bottom. So a cube would also work for our Gaussian surface or a rectangular prism. It will turn out not to matter for these in these cases. So what kind of symmetries do not work? So let's call them bad symmetries. Because some problems have some symmetry, but it's not enough to use Gauss's law. So, for example, reflection symmetry is a, a kind of symmetry that is great. It simplifies problems, but it doesn't allow us to easily use Gauss's law. And so an example of this is a finite line charge. For example, if this is the origin, and we have a charge, we've got a charge line of length L, for example, this is symmetric, so if I flip it about the y-axis, then it's, it's the same charge distribution. But the problem is that there's no surface that I can enclose this in where the electric field is constant on the surface. So over here, for example, the electric field is sort of pointing outwards. Here it's closer to pointing straight up. As we go off onto the side of the cylinder, it's sort of pointing in other weird directions. So not only is E dot DA not just equal to the multiplication of the magnitude, but E isn't even constant. So E as a function of, for example, the distance from this line charge is not constant at a given radius. And so not only can we not simplify the, inner, the thing inside the integral, but we also can't pull the electric field out of the integral. So this is not a kind of symmetry that we can use Gauss's law on, or that it's easy to use Gauss's law on. Other examples are, for example, a, a finite cylinder. So suppose we had a cylinder that looked like this, and it's got a bunch of charge on it but it's only a finite length L, this also doesn't work. So the electric field isn't constant and it doesn't point in a nice direction that lets us uh, cancel out dot products. Uh, other, other things, a ring of charge, for example, this does have symmetry to it, so it has rotational symmetry, but there's no Gaussian surface that we can choose that gives us a nice simple integral. Other, other times, 
for example, a half of a sphere, this will also not work using Gauss's law because it doesn't actually have spherical symmetry. It's just half of a sphere, and half of a sphere does not have spherical symmetry. So in summary, to use Gauss's law easily, you need some type of infinite symmetry. So either infinite along one direction, two directions, or infinite in the sense that there's spherical symmetry. So infinite, you can, you can say in all directions. And in these cases, it is easy to use Gauss's law. In all other cases, it's not. Finally, I'd like to thank all my patrons on Patreon. Your support is greatly appreciated, and it is you who makes these videos possible. If you aren't currently a patron, to get early video access, behind-the-scenes footage, exclusive content, and join a like-minded community, click the link on screen or in the description below. Thanks for watching.